Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the light you give us in the scriptures every time. And thank you, Lord, because we know you are going to reach our understanding even tonight in Jesus' name. Speak to every heart that everyone will receive everything you are giving to us in Jesus' name. Be with us today. And be with all Lord and who are learning with us everywhere tonight in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. you can see now we're coming to Mark chapter 9 tonight. Mark chapter 9. And we're reading and studying from verse 1 all through to verse 8. Please open your Bible. Mark chapter 9 verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That there be some of them that stand here, Which shall not taste of death, Till they have seen the kingdom of God with power. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow. So as no fuller on earth, no dry cleaner on earth, shall can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias, that's Elijah, with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wished not, for he knew not what to say, for they were so afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. Verse 8, and suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save that is except Jesus only with themselves. That's the story of the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must have heard that before. You must have known that before. That Jesus went to the mount and then on that mount, as he has told his own disciples, they saw the glory of the coming kingdom. They saw the glory of God coming upon him. And there is that story of Christ's resplendent glory. The glowing splendor of the transfiguration was a great encouragement to the disciples. You might be asking, why the transfiguration? What's the significance of the transfiguration? And what are we to learn? What are we to get out of this? You know, he's been talking about his death. And the disciples were very sorrowful because he said he was going to die. But he wanted to assure them that that death will not be the final end of the Lord, of their master, and of the Savior. And so he predicted that his glory was going to come. And there were people standing there that would see the manifestation of that glory even before they see death. And so we understand, as he predicted it, so they saw it fulfilled. What an encouragement that whatever he has said, whatever he has prophesied, whatever he has predicted will be fulfilled eventually. Not only that, he has spoken about the cross. 
and they are smoking about his name and they would be sorrowful because they thought that's going to be the end but he said no that's not going to be the end that there will be the crown after the cross there will be dominion after that death not only that they had seen him humiliated by sinful men the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians and all the people that uh, spoke against him and challenged him that humiliation will not be the final end of the master of the Lord and of the Savior they were now to see his honor rather than humiliation and as Moses came and Elias came and spoke with him and they saw the glory so they could not believe in their God more and more that humiliation is not the end honor will come eventually not only that they have seen the miracles that he performed the miracles transformed other people but now this was a manifestation of the majesty of God upon him so it's not just miracles upon other people this is manifestation of transfiguration even for the Lord Jesus Christ now you think about it they had heard about people in the old covenant people in the old testament and some of them had got, they have gone to uh, the great beyond what happened to them a person like Moses who died and did not know the place of his burial all of a sudden in this month of transfiguration Jesus was now with Moses and then Elijah who had gone to heaven telling us that when a saint has died when a servant of God has died that is not the end as it happened to Moses they came from glory and it happened to Elijah came from glory we are going to enter into glory they came from heaven and they gave assurance to the disciples that we too, the saints of God, we too, the believers, we too, the children of God, after we leave this realm, after we leave this place, this earth, we're going to be in glory and we're going to be in heaven. It will happen to you, to me, to us like that in Jesus' name. Not only that, hearing God's voice, because the clouds surrounded them, and they had the voice of the Lord saying, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him, which tells us that there was a confirmation of their faith, that they have been following after the Lord, and Jesus said, Who do men say I am? And some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are one of the prophets, who do you say that I am? They say you are the son of the living God Christ, and then there's a confirmation of what they had said now, it confirms their faith. Not only that, God's declaration banished all fear, and banished all doubt look at what peter said uh, after this later much later concerning that transfiguration concerning the glory that they saw and concerning the manifestation of the greatness and of the goodness of the majesty of the lord jesus christ we're looking at a second peter chapter one second peter chapter one and i'm reading from verse 16 it says for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our lord jesus christ but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty they were there on the matter of transpiration he said all that were telling you he came he died he rose again he sacrificed for our sins and now he's gone to heaven and we're talking to you about the coming of the lord is coming again of that coming glory of that coming majesty it's not fable it's not easy we were with him as eyewitnesses upon the mount and he says in verse 17 for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came a voice to him from excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount you see that assurance you see that confirmation and you see the settled heart with which peter the apostle is saying we're sure of what we believe 
were sure of what we were preaching, were sure of what we were saying, that Christ is coming again, and we saw that glory. When we were seeing him in the holy mount, and now he says in verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. I pray that what we are learning today about the transfiguration of Christ will be an encouragement to everyone. Number one, that whatever Christ has said, whatever Christ has predicted will come to pass. Every promise he gave will come to pass. Every prophecy will come to pass. Every prediction will come to pass. Not only that, number two, that although Christ went to the cross, it was an assurance that the crown will come later. And whatever cross you are bearing today, the cross will pass and the crown will come. Whatever may be the persecution and the oppression that even you thought may be dead will come, dominion will overtake that death in Jesus' name. Number three, they have seen him humiliated. And maybe you feel you have been humiliated, you have been disgraced, and in the public, it's like people have put you down, your honor is coming. What has been abased will be exalted in Jesus' name. You see, number four, I told you already, he worked miracles on other people, transformation on other people. But now is the majesty manifestation of transformation, transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's telling us that as we follow Christ and as we follow the way of the Lord, whatever we are being of good, of miracle to other people, a greater manifestation will come upon your life as a believer in Jesus' name. They saw Moses, they saw Elijah in this uh, particular revelation and the manifestation of the transfiguration. All those who have gone away from us, that is, they have gone to the other side, they have not died in vain, we will see them again. As they saw Elijah and they saw uh, Moses, we are going to see them once again in Jesus' name. Not only that, Moses represents all the saints who have died, and Elijah represents all the saints who have not died, but two will be raptured because Moses died, but Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind and with chariots of fire and with chariots of glory. Then that means then in the final day, like Moses was still alive. Like Moses came and he showed himself and he discussed with Jesus. All those who have died in Christ, they'll be with Christ eventually. And those who will be raptured, we will be forever with the Lord in Jesus' name. You will not miss that opportunity. And then as they have the voice of the Lord saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I well pleased. That gives us assurance. We believe that Jesus is the son of God. And as we believe that, there's going to be a confirmation from the Lord saying, Yes, we believe right. And because we believe that Jesus is the son of God, we'll partake of his glory. And eventually that declares declaration banished all their fears and banished all their doubts and he said we have not followed cunningly devised fables every fear in your heart banished in Jesus name all doubts gone in Jesus name and you hear the word of the Lord the word of the Father that you hear him in everything that he says in everything that he trusts in everything that he teaches that we follow him and as we follow him we will not go astray I will not go astray. A church will not go astray. We will forever follow the Lord and every watch of the Lord. You see, there are people that see it. They choose this. They select this. They reject that. But the Almighty God said, hear him. Everything he says, hear him. Everything he teaches, hear him. Everything he instructed, hear him. Everything he has commanded, hear him. And all the words who have been hearing, all the words who have been learning in the word of God, we're not just learning and keeping some and throwing away some. Everything we're going to do in Jesus' name. 
blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it will keep the word of God and as we keep the word of God the blessing of keeping that word of God will be unto us in Jesus name and when anyone challenges what we believe when anyone challenges what we stand on we'll be able to say we're not following cunningly devised fable that we heard him and we saw him and we received everything he has given and we're living by everything he has given and will not count the doctrine will not count the teaching will not count what we're hearing like a fable like a story like all the parables of the world will know that this is a sure and a steady and a steadfast as heaven itself and this world will be with us until we get to heaven in Jesus name the topic tonight the transfiguration then there's a colon the preview of Christ's coming glory the transfiguration what we're looking at today the transfiguration what we're reading today the transfiguration what we're learning today the transfiguration the preview of Christ's coming glory the preview that means we know Christ is going to have glory a great glory a glory that has uh, never been seen before and this is a preview looking at it even before the reality comes there are three things we're looking at in the study tonight number one the validation of the testimony of his glory the validation of the testimony of his glory he has already said it that those who are standing there some of them will not see death until they saw the son of man coming in his kingdom and his glory and now here is the validation of that testimony that he gave of the coming glory point number two the vision of his transfiguration with glory the vision that they saw the majesty that they saw the greatness of what they saw the vision the revelation of his transfiguration with glory point number three the voice from the throne of glory that's the voice of the father that came and said this is my beloved son hear him the voice from the throne of glory point number one tell me number one somebody there the validation of the testimony of his glory look at this again in Mark chapter 9 I'm looking at verse 1 and you said unto them verily I say unto thee anytime he use that word verily it says I'm telling you something you know, that there's no shadow of doubt about this certainly assuredly I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they see till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power it said the kingdom of God is coming and it's coming with power it's coming with majesty it's coming with honor and it's coming with glory and as some of the people standing here that will not die they will not see death until they see the preview the manifestation of that glory he said the same thing and Matthew recorded it but Matthew gives us some details about that let's come to Matthew chapter 16 Matthew chapter 16 and I'm reading from verse 26 Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 it says for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul verse 27 for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his words it's talking about the future glory the future manifestation he said Christ himself the son of man the son of God will come he's going to die now for the sins of the world he's going to be betrayed and he's going to be killed and he's going to be buried and 
then you rise up the third day after that he is going to reveal himself to you that he is risen from the dead after that he will go to heaven but the time will come when Christ the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his holy angels and then shall he reward every man according to his works not the validation of that the preview of that and the scene so that they will see it ahead of time verse 28 verily i say unto you there be some standing here that shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom it says the glory is coming the kingdom is coming but there are some who are standing here that will have the privilege of having that preview of the transfiguration and the glory of the coming christ we're looking at matthew chapter 24 the coming glory the coming glory he gave testimony to that he gave a voice to that he gave the revelation of that and now he was going to show them a preview of that coming glory look at matthew chapter 24 24, I'm reading from verse 30. It says in verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. It's saying that a lot of things are still going to happen. After my death, he said, Then I will rise from the dead on the third day, and you will see, you'll meet me in Galilee. And then after that, I will go to heaven, and a lot of things will happen. The rapture will take place, great tribulation will take place, and eventually the Son of Man and will come and will come with glory the second coming of the Lord in that verse 30 then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribe of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man with power and great glory that was his testimony that was the prediction what was going to happen it is still future but the transfiguration is a preview of what will happen but this was to validate the testimony he had given and the word he had given that glory was coming we're looking at chapter 25 of matthew matthew chapter 25 we're reading from verse 31 matthew chapter 25 verse 31 it says when the son of man shall come in his glory you see that the death was not going to be the final thing and the humiliation was not going to be the final thing all the persecution and all the crown all the crown of thorns that was not going to be the final thing the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels were seen they shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and that's why um, john also wrote that christ is a christ of glory and the lord is the lord of glory whatever you see of the world of the people of the world seeing uh, humiliating him jesting about him singing uh, bad songs about him uh, don't worry about that the glory will come and then for us who are christians sometimes uh, they make jest of us and sometimes they humiliate and sometimes they put us down but that's not going to be the end we're going to come up we will share in his glory you and i will share in that glory if you are born again if you are sanctified if you are living for the glory of god if you're expecting the coming of the lord you will share in that glory in jesus name look at john chapter 12 john chapter 12 it, the, the glory had been uh, predicted had been prophesied of even from the old testament look at what he's saying now in john chapter 12 verse 38 john chapter 12 verse 38 he says that the saying of Isaiah Yes the prophet might be fulfilled which he spake Lord who has believed a report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed therefore they could not believe because that Isaiah said again he has blinded their eyes your eyes will not be blinded 
and harden their hearts, your heart will not be hardened. That they should not see with their eyes, nor understand, they should be converted and I should heal them. Look at this. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. He saw the glory of the coming Son of God. He saw the glory even before he came to this world. Even before he came the first time, as I had looked ahead and he had seen the majesty and had seen the transfiguration and had seen the glory, the majesty of the Lord. And this, what we're looking at today, is the confirmation, is the affirmation, is the validation of the testimony of his glory. In fact, it says, those Israelites, the people that killed Jesus they didn't recognize him they didn't recognize his glory and the people who persecute believers today they do not understand they do not know the glory that we have and the glory we are going to have and never mind just be patient you will see your time of glory will come as his own time will come and we will be with him and we will share with him so yours will come in Jesus name it tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 1 Corinthians chapter 2 talking about the ignorance of the people that killed and crucified Jesus Christ look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 it says but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory unto our glory look at this verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew for a day known it they would not have crucified tell me the lord of glory christ the lord of glory the son of god the lord of glory the son of man the lord of glory and he prophesied he predicted that glory he said the son of man will come in the glory of his father he will come with the holy angels now for you to understand that thing will eventually come i'm going to take some of you and some of you will be with me on the mount of transfiguration and you will see the lord of glory and the glory upon your Lord upon your master. Look at uh, what uh, James uh, called uh, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. James chapter 2. In James chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. James chapter 2, we're looking at uh, verse 1. It says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, now he's going to give him the real title, the normal title, the expected title, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect of persons. He says, don't uh, have respect of persons or partiality or preference of this to that as to practice the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ because that Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. What will be our theme? What will share our theme? It tells us in Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 24. Mark chapter 13, verse 24. You cannot mistake it that Jesus is the Lord of glory and that he's going to come and when he comes he's going to come in the glory of the Father Mark 13 reading from verse 24 it tells us in verse 24 but in those days after the tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and all the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with power and, and what and glory it says there's going to be tribulation this world is going to go through a time of suffering a time of tribulation a time of pressure a time of terrible 
devastation but he says that's not going to be the end at the end of that great tribulation you're going to see the son of man the son of god the lord jesus christ and he's going to come with power from heaven and with great glory in verse 27 and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth and it says to the uttermost part of heaven we're looking at luke we need to be ready for that day i'll be ready you'll be ready we'll be ready in jesus name Luke chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 24. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. He was teaching the disciples, instructing disciples that, you see the crucifixion, that's not the end. Death, that's not the end. Burial, that's not the end. And then even the resurrection, that's not the end. Ascension back to heaven is not the end. At the real end of the history of the world, Christ is going to come. And he will come in majesty. He will come in glory. And he wants us to be ready for that time. Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 24. In verse 24, it says, And they shall fall by the edge of the Son and shall be led away captive unto all nations, talking about the children of Israel, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. We're now in the period of the time of the Gentiles. The Lord has set aside now the Jewish people, the Israelitish people, the children of Israel, the nation of Israel. But the end will come for the time of the Gentiles. Us. Look at verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, and perplexity, and the sea, and the waves roaring. Men's hearts filling them for what? For fear, and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaking look at this and then shall this see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory Matthew talks about it Mark talks about it John talks about it and Luke talks about it and the apostles spoke about it that the glory was coming and for them to understand that's why Jesus took them to the Mount of Transfiguration so that they will see a preview of that uh, of that glory and praise the Lord will be there too in first uh, second Peter second Peter chapter 1 i'm reading here from verse 16 second peter chapter 1 verse 16 as they got the confirmation as they got the affirmation as they got the validation of the testimony of all that jesus christ has said about his coming glory peter said well what there Peter, James, and John, we have the assurance within us, and we have the affirmation, confirmation within us. We saw Moses, we saw Elijah, we have the voice of the Lord, and there's no doubt about it, the glory is going to come. In 2 Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 16, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we make known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, We've been telling you, Christ is coming again. We've been telling you, He will come in glory, He will come in power, He will come in splendor, He will come in majesty. He said, You know what? It's not a fable, it's not a hearsay. We're sure of what we're telling you about the coming of the Lord. The 
there are so-called believers that live their lives as if Christ will not come again. They live their lives as if all we see in the world now is everything to see. They don't think about heaven. They don't think about glory. They don't think about majesty. They don't think about when the Lord will come and reward everyone and recompense everyone according to what they have done. They just live their lives what Peter said, but we've told you that Christ is coming. And we told you of the majesty and the glory that he will bring when he comes. It says it's not a fable because it says in verse 17, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. He received honor and glory. That was on the Mount of Transfiguration. That's what he received. Majesty and honor, splendor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Peter, how do you know? Did, they tell, did somebody tell you that? Okay, James came to tell you. And John came to tell you. No, he said, look at verse 18. And this voice which came from heaven, this voice which came from heaven, he said, we heard, we heard, not only myself, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. How about us now? What will happen on the final day after you've lived your life faithfully and you've lived your life honestly and you have lived your life righteously and you have lived your life denying all ungodliness, denying all worldly laws and you have lived your life faithfully according to the word of God. What's going to happen on the final day? We're coming to First Peter, First Peter chapter four, and I'm reading from verse twelve. First Peter chapter four, verse twelve. Beloved, think it not strange concerning you know, the fairy trial, which is to try you, as though some strange things happened unto you. He said, Beloved children of God, persecution may come now, suffering may come now, opposition may come now rejection may come now that is not your end that's not the final thing in your life glory is coming honor is coming reward is coming look at verse 13 but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy the glory of God will be upon you on that day. And if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. It will rest upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But he says, as we live our lives, as we live honestly, as we live righteously, as we live godly in this present world, let nobody catch you doing evil. Do evil at no time. Look at verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, otherwise that glory will not come, or as a thief, otherwise that glory will not come, or as an evil doer, otherwise that glory will not come, punishment will come, or as a busy body in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that will be not the gospel of God? And if the righteous castle be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? The who are hearing, but they are not receiving, and they do not have the mind to follow Christ, what will they be on that time? Now they are having the highest of their time and their joy and their pleasure in doing evil. Then humiliation will come for them on that final day. And judgment will come for them on that final day. And oppression 
and persecution, punishment will come for them on the final day. But for those of us who are living godly now, we're living the time of trial and time of temptation, the time of persecution, and we go on steadfastly walking with the Lord on that final day as it will be glory for the Lord Jesus Christ. It will be glory for you and I on that day in Jesus' name. Look at Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3. We're looking at it from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. It said, Christ died, we're dead with him. And Christ rose again, we rise with him. And Christ is seated on the right hand side of God. Was seated with him in heavenly places right now. And he's coming again. And when he comes again, he's going to take us away. He says, if you have that mind, if you have that promise, if you have that expectation, and you know that glory is going to come for you, he says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above and not things on the earth, for ye are dead. And your life is siege with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him, tell me, in glory. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then will you also appear with him in glory. That glory will be ours in Jesus' name. And what we're learning today, what we're reading today, is the validation of the testimony of that glory. This preview of the coming glory strengthened the apostles, and it ought to strengthen all believers today. It confirms their faith. It ought to confirm our faith. It confirmed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and it made them to look for that, number one, betrayal will not be the tragic ending and also in your life they betray you some people they flatter you and then behind they stab you and behind they do evil to you that's just a minute scene that will not be the tragic ending of your life in Jesus name number three it was telling them that Judas Iscariot Pilate the high priest will not have the final say. After Judas, the glory will still come. After Pilate, the glory will still come. After Herod, the glory will still come. Whatever the people of the world do to you, whatever backsliders do against you, that will not be the final say in your life. Your glory will still appear in Jesus' name. Number three, death will not be a dead end. Death will not be a dead end. You know, many times when a beloved brother, a beloved sister dies, we think, okay, that's the end. We can't see him anymore. We'll not see her anymore. We'll see one another again. As they saw Moses, as they saw Elijah, the people who are raptured, they will see the people who have died in the Lord. Because death will not be a dead end. They have gone to heaven and they are waiting for us. We will remain faithful unto the end so that we'll be together in Jesus' name. You know, it's a confirmation some people sometimes, they think when a Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How about those who died in the Old Testament? How about Daniel? How about David? How about Samuel? How about Moses? How about Elijah? How about all those prophets of God? And this preview of the coming glory is telling us that all the Old Testament saints are servants of God, they're still alive in heaven. I said they are still alive in heaven. Number five, the glory that shall be revealed will far exceed the present day suffering. And you know sometimes uh, when somebody is suffering as a believer, as a child of God, you're saying, what else is going to happen after this? The suffering is too much. And some people who do not have the knowledge of the word of God, they will say it's even better to die. You will not take your life. You will not commit suicide. You will not miss the glory that is still to come in Jesus' name. 
there is nothing happening now that is so serious that is so terrible that uh, you know you will say I think I'm going to pack it up no don't give up before the glory comes look at Romans chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 18 Romans chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 18 for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory with the glory with the glory which shall be revealed and when that glory is revealed you will forget everything you have suffered on earth in Jesus name number six the destiny of all men is determined by the Son of God think about that any man in the world any woman in the world the destiny of every man the destiny of every woman even those who say they don't believe they don't accept this and that their destiny is in the hand of the son of God that's why the voice came here is my beloved son hear him number seven Christ is God's final word Christ is God's final word because God said here is my beloved son hear him we're coming back to mark chapter 9 mark chapter 9 point number two now the vision of the transfiguration with glory the vision of the transfiguration with glory we're looking at it from chapter 9 of mark i'm reading from verse 2 mark chapter 9 verse 2 and after six days jesus take it peter james and john and lead us them up into a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them transfigured before them they had never seen him in glory like this before they had never seen him in resplendent in majesty like this before he the Christ he the Lord was transfigured before them and his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow so as no fuller on earth can white them and when he does transformation work in our lives he does it in a way that no psychologist could have made us better that no scientist could have made us better and no person on this earth could have made a moral life a spiritual life a character better because it says it was so transfigured and it be his clothes became a shining as no dry cleaner as no cleanser as no as no fuller on earth could watch them and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses and they were talking with Jesus and then Peter answered and said unto Jesus master it is good for us to be here he was saying it's good for us to be here if that place was so wonderful that place was so beautiful in the place where Jesus Christ was transfigured and Peter said it's good for us to be here think about if the preview of the glory of the majesty was so great that Peter the apostle said hey, let's forget everything we left behind let's forget family let's forget uh, work let's forget all our possession and let us remain here if the glory was so much in the preview how about when we get to heaven itself there's no other place to aim at and there's no other place to say we're going we must get to heaven what glory it will be what majesty it will be what splendor it will be and he says let us make a three tabernacles one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias then in verse 6 for he wished not for he knew not for he understood not what to say for they were so afraid that's the transfiguration for Christ the transfiguration was a telescopic granting of the joy that was set before him 
the joy that was set before him. For him, it made him to endure whatever he was going to go through. Remember this preview of the glory and this preview of the coming kingdom of God was before the betrayal, was before the uh, crucifixion, was before he was um, hung on the cross, nailed to the cross. But you know, he was remembering the glory, the glory that will come. Let me show you. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. For the glory that was set before him. For the majesty that was coming in after the death, after the crucifixion. For the joy, for the coronation, for the crowning that was set before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He was always looking at that. He got this preview. And this is what we should always be doing yourself anytime there's trouble anytime there's trial anytime there's suffering and uh, you know the, the suffering wants to overwhelm you and drown you in sorrow in your tears you look away from the suffering now and then you look ahead for the glory that will come that's what he did for Jesus because this one foreshadowed his final power his final dominion and his final glory it was a solid steadfast assurance that number one after the sweat there will be sweet if you sweat today sweet will come tomorrow number two that after the grief there will be greatness he will be so great greater than Moses and greater than Elijah greater than all men that ever lived and every man will see him exalted to greatness for the father will give him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow number three it was an assurance for him and for us that after the sorrow there will be supremacy after the sorrow, there will be supremacy. You know, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. But that will not be the end. That's what the transfiguration is telling us. Whatever sorrow there is uh, today, in any life or in your life, supremacy will come after in Jesus' name. Number four, after the shame, there will be stardom. After the shame, there will be stardom. That's why it says, was looking ahead. For the joy that was set before him, he despised the shame. He knew he will be the bright and the morning star. The stardom will come. Number five, it was to tell us, it was to assure him, after the suffering, there will be splendor. After the suffering, there will be splendor. Look at what you might be going through today, suffering and shame and trial they put me down they put me there they set me aside they put me on the cooler whatever after the suffering they have a splendor in Jesus name you know how they took him and they put him at a weeping post and they whip him but we know number six after the stripes they are the scepter. He will hold the scepter, the rod of the king. He will reign forever and ever. And we shall reign with him. All right, I will reign with him. On the cross, they gave him gold. God is very bitter. They gave him gold to drink. But you know, he was always looking at whatever happened today. He was looking for this. This transfiguration we're reading about today. It was the glory in the future that was now previewed before them. And so he knew after the goal, the glory, glory will come. Whatever bitterness is there in your life today, and whatever sorrow, shame may be in your life there today, and whatever. By God, people may give you to drink today, your glory will come. Yeah. Number nine, after the cross, the crown. After the cross, the crown. He knew that although they put a crown of thorns upon him, 
that's not the final crown. And although they made him to hang on the cross, he knew that will not be the final aim. After your cross, you will wear a crown. Uh, come back, come back to that. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. And let's read again uh, verses 2 and 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. You see, there are people, they always look back. And they always look at the present and they never look at the future. That's why the sea of suffering you know, is drowning them, it's overwhelming them. They look at the past, they say, You know, since I came to this world and since I became a believer, a Christian, if you know what I have suffered and what I have gone through, what they have done to me, what they have done to me, they're always looking at the past. And then they say, Even my present condition, if I tell you my present condition, you will cry for me i'm looking at your future condition and i will smile for you and i will rejoice for you here is what jesus christ did he was not looking at the past he was not looking at the present he was looking at the future glory that's the essence of this transfiguration look at it now i'm reading from hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 again hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith is the author of my faith I said, he's the author of my faith. He'll be the perfecter of your faith. He'll be the finisher of your faith. And then he says, who for the joy that was set before him. Looking at that joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look at this. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind how did he endure all that he endured everything because he knew after the sinners contradiction there will be the second coming and it will come in glory and he'll come in majesty and he'll come in splendor 11 after endurance there'll be exaltation christ is going to be exalted as no man on earth had ever been exalted that's why he endured he was looking at the coming uh, exaltation number 12 he knew after the great sacrifice there'll be so great salvation for so great a multitude which no man could number that's why he endured and that's why he knew that although there is a present a suffering there's going to be a future exaltation how I rejoice with you that if you're a believer, if you're a child of God, there's going to be future exaltation in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, look at the result of, you know, what he suffered. We're looking at Luke. Luke chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 1. For as much, for as much as many, are taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most assuredly believed among us most assuredly believed among us why did he show them this transfiguration that those things they are believed they will believe firmly they will not allow anything to shake them from the belief they had a believer there is heaven nothing will shake you from that i believe there's coming glory nothing will shake you away from that I believe that we children of God were going to sit together with the Lord Jesus Christ in splendor, in great majesty, and in glory. And because of that, you are firm and you are steadfast in your heart. And nothing will make you fall from your steadfastness in Jesus' name. And let's look at um, 
second peter chapter 3 second peter chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 17 ye therefore beloved seen ye know these things before now that you know that glory is coming now that you know that majesty is coming now that you know that honor is coming seen my brothers and sisters dearly beloved see that you know these things beforehand beware lest she also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness you remain steadfast i said you remain steadfast anytime the wind is blowing and is shaking you you remember the transfiguration the glory the majesty the splendor and you say i will not miss that glory you know that's the technique of the devil that's the secret of the devil he wants you to miss the coming glory he wants you to miss the coming majesty and the splendor and so he makes the wind to blow he makes somebody to dribble you here and there and for something to happen that you'll say i don't know whether i want to go on or not i am going on and i'm going up and i will remain steadfast you remain steadfast in jesus name look at verse 18 but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him the glory both now and forever Amen. The Lord has assured us that, uh, you know, this time will come. You see, John also adds another revelation added to this. That's what these people endured. That's what these apostles endured. They endured everything because they knew that glory was coming, coming for Christ, and also coming for them. Revelation chapter 1. In Revelation chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 10. Revelation to 1 verse 10. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's name, and I heard behind me a great voice saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, what thou seest write in a book, and send it to the seven churches in Asia. Come to verse 12, and I turned to see the voice of him that spake with me. And then he says, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto, tell me, one like unto, say it aloud, the Son of Man clothed with a garment down to his foot, and girt about with paths with a golden girdle, and his head and his ears were white as wool as white as snow and then his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as seed have been burnt in the furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was that the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. This one was even more glorious than the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw him in majesty, you will see him. He saw him in glory, you will see him. And what Jesus Christ went through, he went through so that all of us will also share in the coming glory in Jesus' name. Let's come back to Mark now, chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, and we're reading from verses 7 and 8. This point number 3, the voice from the throne of glory. The voice from the throne of glory. He had seen the majesty already, the glory already. And Peter was so surprised, he didn't know what to say. He said, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Because he didn't know what to say. But now in verse 7, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Because the Father said it. 
because God said it. He said, this is my beloved son. I believe Jesus is the son of God. Why? Because he himself said, I'm the son of God. I believe Jesus is the son of God. Why? Because even the angels affirmed, he is the son of God. Even the demons affirmed, you are the son of the Holy One. And here God said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save that is except only Jesus only with themselves, the Son of God. Look at Daniel. We're reading from chapter 7, Daniel, chapter 7. We're reading from verse 9, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. It's been declared Jesus is the very Son of God. It says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment is white as snow, and the air of his head like the pure wool, and his throne was like the fairy flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Verse 13, and I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like, tell me, the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. He's coming again. And came to the ancient of days, and they brought him, the Son of Man, the Son of God, near unto him, the ancient of days. And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom. And then you say that all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. That the son of God, the son of man, the father himself um, affirmed that this is my son. Look at Psalm 2. In Psalm 2, we're reading from verse 7. Psalm 2, we're reading from verse 7. It says, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. Thou art my son. Everybody say that. That's the Father affirming, confirming. That's the Father saying to everyone, even in the Old Testament, this is preview again of the coming Son. It says, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee, ask of me, and I will give thee uh, the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt bring them with a rod of iron, thou shalt um, dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, O ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, embrace the Son, believe the Son, abide in the Son. It says, Kiss the son, love the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled, but for a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. I believe him. I said, I believe him. And I will hear him. That's what the father said. Here is my beloved son. Hear him. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. We're reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. Hear him. Hear him. He speaks the word. Hear him. Is the final voice of God. Hear him. He gives us the final teaching, the final doctrine to get to the kingdom of God. Hear him. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw 
the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, What did that voice say? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's why we need to hear him. In fact, when it says we should hear him, this has been prophesied even from the Old Testament. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, talking about Christ who was still to come thousands of years before the time of Moses. Here is what Moses said that he will come and he is the final final prophet, the final teacher, and he is the final master, the final messiah, and he is the savior. And when he comes, the word of God will be in his mouth. Hear him. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet, capital P, a prophet like no other prophet, from the midst of thee and of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him, that's unto Christ, unto me, that's the master unto him that one that is to come unto him the son of man unto him the son of God shall ye hack him hear him unto him shall ye hack him look at verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and I will put my words in his mouth I will put my words in his mouth any other thing that is said by any preacher any prophet anyone different from what Christ has said that thing is false and what he has said is the truth and the Lord is saying we shall hear him you will hear him in Jesus name I'll put my words in his mouth and he shall speak Speak unto them all that I shall command him. He shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Come back to the New Testament, Acts of the Apostles. I'm reading from chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Jesus, the Son of God, has come with the final teaching, or the final word, and with the final doctrine. And the Father in heaven is saying, Hear him. Whatever he says unto you, hear him. As he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God that the final truth hear him as he said except your righteousness shall be greater than the righteousness of the church goers of the nominal Christians of the Pharisees and the Sadducees you will in no wise enter into the kingdom of God as the final word hear ye him as he said blessed are the pure in heart and they shall see God that the final word the impure shall not see the Lord hear ye him as he said tarry in Jerusalem to ye be baptized in the Holy Ghost for ye shall receive power not many days says hear ye him we need the power of the Holy Ghost as he said watch and pray that that day will not come upon you unawares hear ye him as he said be ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of man shall come hear him because he has given us the final word Acts chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 22 Acts chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 22 for Moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you verse 23 and it shall come to pass that every soul that will not hear that prophet every soul that will not hear the son of man every soul that will not hear the son of God every soul that will not hear the word of Christ shall be destroyed from among the people if you don't hear the word of repentance you have said and the word of redemption the word of righteousness they are spoken in uh, there's no way you can get to heaven to get to heaven the Lord has said here is my beloved son here is my only begotten son hear ye him as you hear him uh, you will live you will not perish Amen. Acts chapter 7 
We're reading from verse 37. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Him shall we hear. Him will you hear. Him will I hear. Him shall ye hear. We will hear him and we will live in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew also recorded this event of the transfiguration. This event of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. This event of the preview of the glory, the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 17, reading from verse 4, reading from verse 4, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet speak, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice from the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Tell me the rest. Yes. Hear ye him. We have no excuse. We are not just to hear, we are also to obey. And we have no excuse. We cannot say he has not has spoken to us the words that we need to hear and the words we need to practice. Here is my beloved son. Hear ye him. We're looking at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We're reading from verses 34 and 35. Luke chapter 9. We're reading from verse 34. Luke chapter 9, verse 34. While he thus speak, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice from the cloud, out of the cloud, saying, Tell me. Say it aloud. Matthew said so, Mark said so, Luke said so. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be confirmed. This is my beloved son. Hear him. We will hear him. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manner speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God spoke in the past by the prophets. God spoke unto the nation of Israel by the prophets. But look at verse 2. As in these last days spoken unto us by his son. In these last days is now speaking unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the worlds. Look at chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, we're reading from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. Everything we have heard of the word of Christ, everything we have heard of the word of the Messiah, the very Son of God, we need to give them more earnest heed. Lest we should let them sleep from us. It says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the force began to be spoken by the Lord, began to be spoken of by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. He has spoken about salvation, 
hear him he has spoken about how to get to heaven hear him and all the words he has spoken everything he taught everything he said will abide forever by that word was saved by that word was sanctified by that word was the power of the holy ghost by that word will live in the light and walk in the light and walk in righteousness his word will abide forever matthew chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 35 matthew chapter 24 we're reading from verse 35 the words of the lord jesus christ are full and final is a final message from the almighty god to be saved we need to hear him to be acceptable unto god we need to hear him to live a life that is pleasing unto god and live so much that will please him and we get to heaven at last after our life on earth we need to hear him or to reject christ's word all who reject Christ's doctrine, all who reject Christ's teaching will be lost forever. I will not be lost. You see, there are some people, they think church is just Christianity. Go to any church, doesn't matter which church you go. Whether they deny the word of Christ or not, uphold the word of Christ or not, it doesn't matter. Just go to any church and carry the Bible. Whether the people preaching are repeating and re-emphasizing the words of Christ or not, they say it doesn't matter. Once you are just going to church, not at all. If you are not hearing the words of Christ, if you are not believing the words of Christ, if you are not living by the words of Christ, if you are not born again as Christ has said, and you are just in church, just in church, just in church, a church goer, you will not get to the kingdom of God. If you are going to get to the kingdom of God, the Father said, here is my beloved son, hear ye him. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 35. Matthew 24 verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. His words shall not pass away. Salvation, that's what he spoke about. Sanctification, that was what he spoke about. And having a pure heart, that's what he spoke about. Holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, that's what he spoke about. Baptism in the Holy Ghost, that was what he spoke about. One man, one wife, until death do us part. That's what he spoke about. Every word he has spoken, he says, you'll not take a jot away. You'll not take a teacher away. Anyone that takes any part of the word of God away, that's, that one is not here in him that one will not get to heaven and thank God I am going to heaven I say thank God I'm going to heaven and you're not changing church like we're changing clothes you put all that clothes and put on another this season you are you know in that church and that season you're in another church because you have itching ears and you just want them to say what you want to hear you'll not be like that in Jesus name the word he has given us will not untie it and the word he has given us will not change it will not modify it we're going to abide by the word and hear the word and obey the word until the final day in jesus name this is my beloved son hear ye him and as you hear him you'll have grace from him you put faith in him and you have strength and power to be from him in jesus name and on the final day thank god that glory you will share in that glory in jesus name revelation chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 13 revelation chapter 22 we're looking at uh, verse 13 i am alpha and omega that's christ the beginning and the end that's a messiah our savior the first and the last that our lord that's the very son of god blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city for without outside heaven you'll not be outside heaven those who are outside heaven will be in hell in darkness forever and ever i will not be outside you will not be outside in jesus name 
But remember this is my beloved son. Hear ye. Verse 15. For without are the dogs and the sorcerers and the allmongers and the murderers and the idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright and the morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is the first come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Salvation is free. Freedom from sin is free. The power to live a victorious life is available. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. And for I testify unto every man, I testify unto every preacher, I testify unto every minister, I testify unto every bishop, I testify unto every prophet, I testify unto every church leader, I testify to every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man, any preacher, any prophet, any bishop, any apostle, any member, of any church, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away any man, bishop, apostle, preacher, deeper, higher, minister, no matter who, if any man shall take from the words of this book of prophecy, it says God shall take away his part out of the book of life. I pray God will not take your name out of the book of life. Just to gamble with the word of God. Those who toss the word of God up and down. Those who mutilate the word of God. Those who subtract out of the word of God. Those who joke, jest and joke with the word of God. And those who do not believe the totality of the word of God, they add whatever they want. They change whatever they want and they take away whatever they want. When the Almighty God said, here is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Don't take away from his word. Don't mutilate more the or don't uh, destroy his word because if you do you are contradicting the father you are contradicting the son and you are contradicting the holy ghost who has inspired the word if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city uh, when they don't find your name in the register of the holy city how can you be there your name will be there your name will not get out of the book of life in Jesus name but you know if you gamble with the word of God if you go to associate with the people who modify the word of God and they don't respect the word of God if any man shall take away his name shall be taken out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book all the rewards and all the good things inheritance the Lord that said he will give unto his faithful children those who take away from the word of God they will not even get to heaven and they will not have the inheritance in heaven, I pray you'll not miss out on the final day in Jesus' name. He who testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And everybody shout, Amen. The glory is coming. We've seen a preview of the glory of Christ today and the glory we are going to partake of when Christ shall come. I pray you'll not miss that glory. Make sure you are born again. Make sure you are living a righteous life by the grace of God. Make sure you are sanctified. You have that holiness without which no man shall say the Lord. Make sure you are pure in that so you will see the Lord on that final day. And make sure you are still working for the Lord. Occupy till I come. And when Christ shall come, you will appear with him in glory in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. There's the time to take everything we've learned tonight to the Lord in prayer and to say, yes, Lord, I want to share in that glory. I've seen the preview of the glory of Christ. I've seen that transformation today and we're not following after a cunningly devised fable and I know that
that when it shall come, it will come with glory. Pray that you will be a partaker of that glory when it comes.